Now at 6 on Spectrum News on ABC 45, the first snow of this year's winter season is here, making the late afternoon commute tricky. Our news crews are standing by to give you the very latest on the conditions and what you can expect. Plus, NCDOT crews across the area say they're ready to handle this first blast of winter. Their preparations to keep those who need to drive safe. And our meteorologist Terry Bennett will have your complete winter weather forecast. Spectrum News on ABC 45 at 6 starts right now. Good evening, I'm Kristen Drummond. Rob Wu has the day off. We have more on those stories in just a minute, but first tonight, the wintry weather. You're looking here at snow falling earlier today at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem. The first snow of the season hitting the triad and some students, as you can see here, wasting no time to enjoy it. So let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Terry Bennett is on standby to give us an update on the forecast. And Terry, can we expect even more snow to come in in the next few hours? <laughs> Not only the next few hours, but through the overnight and into Saturday morning too. Outside right now, we are looking at uh, some pretty sloppy roads outside. The road surfaces are generally wet. It's been on the grassy surfaces that we've seen some of that accumulation. But on those elevated road surfaces, like those bridges and overpasses, you can see some of the slush there. That's where you should really slow things down and take it a bit more cautiously if you're going to be out this evening. Temperatures are not going to get any colder. They're going to stay right around the freezing mark. So snow will continue as we move through the evening overnight and gradually begin to taper off during the midday hours on Saturday. Snow is extending all the way southward back to the Gulf Coast of Mexico. Here's a look at uh, the winter storm warning now that's going to take us through the overnight and into Saturday. It will continue until 4 p.m. Maybe dropped a bit earlier as I think the snow begins to taper off during the midday. But snow continuing, temperatures holding right around freezing. Tomorrow afternoon, we're not going to see much of a warm up. We'll stay in the 30s. And Kristen, as we get into Sunday morning and temperatures dive into the 20s, that's when we really could have some big headaches out on the area roads. I'll talk about that coming up with your full weather in a few minutes. Well, snow is already sticking in areas around the central part of the state, creating a winter wonderland, but also making it a bit tricky for drivers at this hour. Spectrum News reporter Asal Razai is in Yakin County with a look at conditions there and how folks are preparing Asal. It seems to keep coming down there. Kristen, it does. It really hasn't stopped since this morning. I want you to take a look at my boots really quick. They're completely buried in the snow. Just to give you an idea of how much snow is actually sticking on the ground here. We weren't really expecting it to pile up like this, but as you can see, it's a winter wonderland. As you were saying, you can hear the roads are pretty slushy behind me and kind of scary to drive on in some areas. But as crews are making their way around, as you heard Terry just say, because the snow is just going to continue continue to pick up. Tis the season for snow and lots of it. Wow. <laughs> wow. I thought we were going to have a flurry all out wide out. <laughs> Denise and her husband Rick Church run Church's Hardware in North Wilkesboro. Mm -hmm. and with weather like this, they say things are pretty busy around here. Uh, sleds, shovels, salt, boom. As soon as that snow comes around, it goes quick. Mr. Church, who mans the counter year round, says it's best to be prepared before the first big storm of the season hits. Well, it's a good thing to have your, your sleds and shovels and put batteries and uh, oil lamps and uh, kerosene heaters and things like that. In case Wilkes County EMS put one extra crew out on the roads when the flakes started sticking. Of course, uh, the, the accidents increase a little bit and also falls as well. Uh, people this time of year are out uh, shopping because of the Christmas season. And a season that demands prep for more than just gift giving and gatherings. You, sort of, you want to be sure your pipes are insulated and, and all that kind of thing. As winter weather in the Tar Heel State can be unpredictable. We'll have snow, we'll have warm days. It's North Carolina. Warm weather, cold weather, snow days, either way, seems to be sticking here for a couple of days. It's going to be cold, so we're expecting it to be wide out at least through Sunday. So emergency response crews are really telling people slow down, and they're seeing most accidents that are caused are by speed. So make sure there's a good distance between you and the car in front of you. And of course, give yourself some extra time to get to that destination as we are just expecting the snowfall to get worse. Reporting in Yadkin County, SL Rezai, Spectrum News.
Definitely good advice. Stay cautious if you have to be out on the roads tonight. Thanks, Asal. Well, NCDOT Division 9 says it has 380 pieces of equipment ready to go on the roads tonight. If needed, they're prepared to salt up to 2,200 miles of road and plow as much as 11,000 miles across Davidson, Davy, Forsyth, Rowan, and Stokes counties. Management brought it in their operators and put contractors on standby to head out when conditions warrant it. We plan to run crews through the night into tomorrow morning until the event subsides um, and deal with conditions as they present themselves hour by hour. As always, with potentially slick road conditions and salt trucks making the rounds, crews ask you don't go out if you don't have to. Well, road crews in Guilford County also getting ready for their first winter test of the season. Spectrum News reporter Casey Husband speaks with DOT's Division 7 workers about their preparations. Get some movies, go to the grocery store, and tell my couch to be ready because I'm about to lay on it all day because I'm not going anywhere. Melvin Robinson is having a lazy day as the snow falls. State DOT crews at Division 7 in Guilford County are not. They've been busy dusting off salt trucks for the state's first winter system of the season. Getting the trucks uh, loaded and getting them ready. If there's any last minute repairs that need to be made on the equipment, we'll do that. Drivers were also getting into winter weather mode. It was raining all the way up until about 30 minutes ago, and now it's starting to snow. And hopefully we get some more snow on our way to get there. The DOT has been monitoring all week and says for the first system of the season, they didn't brine the roads. If we had pre-treated, the rain would just have either diluted the solution that was on the roadway or washed it away. So they'll stay up and handle the snow as it falls. I wish more would come. When it does, these trucks are ready. In Guilford County, Katie Husband, Spectrum News. The Division 7 yard has 150 trucks and 80 contracted trucks. The salt barn holds 6,000 tons of salt. An SUV versus a building this morning in Greensboro, and it's hard to say which one. A passenger says the vehicle lost its brakes driving down Eugene Street around 9. It rolled through the intersection with Gate City Boulevard and slammed into a convenience store on the corner, causing damage to three other cars in the process. Well, students and faculty at Elon University are mourning the loss of one of their own. Harrison Durant was found in his home this morning by Elon police. Police are currently investigating. No word on what caused his death. The university will hold a gathering of friends Saturday evening for the community to mourn and remember Durant. It'll be at the Newman Lumen Pavilion at 6. The wanted serial bank robber strikes again. The Greensboro police say a man hit the BB&T bank on College Road this morning. Investigators suspect it's the same man responsible for robberies at PNC Bank on Wednesday and Mechanics and Farmers Bank yesterday. A Crime Stopper tip helped them identify the man as 46-year-old Carl Brian Taylor. They're now looking for more tips from the public to catch him. You know, we can't say enough how much we appreciate the, the, the assistance that we get from the community because we definitely need their help. If you know where Mr. Taylor is, uh, then please give us a call. Uh, whether he needs help uh, or, or assistance, you know, that we don't know, but we do need to bring him to justice for these crimes. Police say since the beginning of the year, they've had 13 bank robberies. Eight of them have been solved. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers at 336-373-1000. This father's locked up, accused of abusing his baby girl. The Davidson County Sheriff's Office started investigating Brandon Gossett early last month when doctors found his seven-month-old daughter had three broken ribs and multiple unexplained bruises. This week, deputies arresting him on a felony child abuse charge and placing him in jail under a $50,000 bond. In another abuse case we've been following, a grandmother in Randleman says she hasn't seen her granddaughter for months and wants the six-year-old to know she's thinking of her. Investigators say the girl's father abused her and she's now in foster care. Spectrum News Managing Editor Bob Costner sat down and talked with the grandmother about the holidays and what she's planning. As December snow flies, Christmas nears, and it's been months since a grandmother's seen her granddaughter. She's in foster care. Okay. But I do not know where. After several concerned calls to police, five-year-old Angel Bird was found in this home in September. She was locked in a stairway closet, malnourished, burned, and bruised. Her grandmother, Linda Binsky, left work to talk to us about her. It is hard, and it's more hard thinking what she's thinking about it. Yeah. Why we're not around, why she, we've not come to see her, why we've not called her. Angel's father and his friend are facing child abuse charges. There's an eviction notice for him on the front door. 
One DSS employee was fired for grossly inefficient job performance. Another left for personal reasons. There needs to be new rules, new laws. So these children aren't left in places that aren't safe. And Linda says what she really wants to be able to do is see Angel home for Christmas. She's planning a get together Sunday to make cards and posters for Angel. There's many people that love Angel and care about her and want to see her home. And hoping for a Christmas miracle. I want her to know we're still here. We're still, we're still fighting for her. We still care about her. We've not abandoned her. And Randleman, Bob Costner, Spectrum News. Linda hopes Angel will hear or see about the event to show their thinking of Angel. It's Sunday afternoon from 2 to 4 at Randleman Elementary in Randleman. Leaders, community members, and law enforcement in Alamance County continue working together, brainstorming ways to combat the spread of drugs that's causing so many deaths. Today, community members held a forum to address the growing issue. During the event, they worked to elevate awareness, discuss causes and effects of the drugs, educate leaders, and generation prevention strategies. Ultimately, there needs to be access, and, and people have to have access to, to, to the treatment to help overcome this problem. And I think a lot of times they don't have that access. Whether it's health care that's too expensive, um, we need to look at avenues to, to make sure that it is, it's something that they can get. The next opioid forum is scheduled for February 27th in Durham. Well, speak now or forever hold your peace. A proposal is on the table to increase homeowners insurance rates. After the break, how you can make your voice heard if you oppose the increase. Did you put up flyers? Excuse me, how much for this? Um... Death ray, it's billion dollars. What? I'm never going to make enough to cover these early termination fees for satellite. They make you sign a contract, so you got to pay hundreds of dollars just to get out of it. They don't even remove the dish. Ridiculous. I'll give you four bucks. Put it in the jar. I would pay twice as much for that. That was me trying to get her into a bidding war. Uh -huh. Termination fees are evil. Yeah, I can use that. Spectrum doesn't have them. Satellite TV, bad. Spectrum, good. Five minutes a night just doesn't cut it. That's why Chevrolet Sports Night is on for a full half hour every night on Spectrum News. Get intense with Get it. Get more scores. Hey! More highlights. More interviews. It's just a matter of time. More coverage of your favorite high school, college, and professional teams. And more time to focus on your local teams. Watch Chevrolet Sports Night. Nightly at 10 on Spectrum News. Exclusively on Spectrum. You're watching Spectrum News on ABC 45. Get your Spectrum News anytime. Call today. The North Carolina Rate Bureau is proposing a significant rate increase on homeowners insurance. And if you don't like the sound of that, well, you now have the opportunity to let the Department of Insurance know what you think of the proposal. Spectrum News reporter, anchor Nick LaGrange breaks it down for us. In November, the North Carolina Rate Bureau filed a rate increase request with the State Department of Insurance on homeowners insurance. This change is a result of actually not having a, a change in rates for about five years. We have come back to uh, uh, I'll try again, I guess. The proposed rate changes vary greatly depending on region. Coastal areas would be hit the hardest, topping out at just over an 80% increase. Both Raleigh and Durham would face just under a 22% increase. Other counties vary from a 7% decrease to a 26% increase for an overall state average increase of 18.7%. We're about number 29 in the, in the country, but if this rate increase goes through, all of a sudden we've become you know, the 11th most expensive, so that's a pretty big change. One group that would almost immediately feel the effects of a rate increase is senior citizens. AARP State Director Doug Dickerson says those on a fixed income are already staring down rate increases in health insurance and energy. He says this increase would only make things worse. You put all that stuff together, people are having a net loss, so the question is, is who's looking out for older adults. Ray Bureau GM Ray Evans says the proposed changes are based on the aggregate of historical loss data and loss projections based on that data. Others debate where the numbers come from, but regardless, it will be up to DOI Commissioner Mike Causey to either approve or deny the request. I would encourage every citizen that wants to comment about homeowners insurance or property insurance in North Carolina to do so. In Raleigh, Nick LaGrange, Spectrum News. 
You can submit comments on this either in person, via email, or by mailing a written letter. A public comment session will be held this Tuesday, December 12th from 10 to 4.30 at the Department of Insurance Building in Raleigh. If you'd like to submit a comment online or through the mail, we'll have those details linked to this story at SpectrumLocalNews.com. Well, don't go away. Your sports is next here on Spectrum News on ABC 45. Did you put up flyers? Excuse me, how much for this? Um... Death ray. It's billion dollars. What? <sighs> I'm never going to make enough to cover these early termination fees for satellite. They make you sign a contract, so you got to pay hundreds of dollars to, just to get out of it. They don't even remove the dish. Ridiculous. I'll give you four bucks. Put it in the jar. I would pay twice as much for that. That was me trying to get her into a bidding war. Uh -huh. Termination fees are evil. Yeah, I can use that. Spectrum doesn't have them. Satellite TV, bad. Spectrum, good. Five minutes a night just doesn't cut it. That's why Chevrolet Sports Night is on for a full half hour every night on Spectrum News. Get intense with it. Get more scores, more highlights, more interviews. It's just a matter of time. More coverage of your favorite high school, college, and professional teams. And more time to focus on your local teams. Watch Chevrolet Sports Night, nightly at 10 on Spectrum News, exclusively on Spectrum. You're watching Spectrum News on ABC 45. Get your Spectrum News anytime. Call today. Homelessness in North Carolina is on the decline despite a rise across the country. The number of homeless people in the state dropped by more than 6% according to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. But there was an increase at the national level for the first time in seven years. Still, shelter administrators in many cities worry that conditions are set for a homeless population to spike again. In Charlotte, Concord, Gastonia area, home prices rose by roughly 7% year over year in October despite the push for more affordable housing. We have made progress in the past. We made progress in the midst of recession. We were decreasing homelessness. So we've got to uh, stay on top of things right now and make sure that our progress doesn't slip. Along with the city's current need, Charlotte faces the potential loss of more than 1,000 subsidized units with expiring federal subsidies. Time now for a look at your sports with Jason Brown. Linebacker Shaq Thompson is out for Sunday's game with Minnesota. Panthers tight end Greg Olson, center Ryan Khalil, and receivers Devin Funches and Kaylin Clay listed as questionable. Olson, Funches, and Khalil are all expected to play. Sunday's contest with the 10 and 2 Vikings marks the start of a four game stretch that will determine Carolina's playoff fate. The good news the Panthers still sit in first or sit in the first NFC wildcard spot, and that, they, and that three of their next four games are at home. But everyone would feel a lot better if they kick things off with a win over a division leader like Minnesota. You know, when you're playing a team like this, as far as you know how they disguise, how fast they play, how they rally to the football, and um, you know, you just have to make sure that you're that you're on your A game. You know, I just think we're at the point of the season now where, you know, we're running out of time. You know, we we got a big four-game stretch here that if, if we don't take advantage of, you know, our season's gonna end. Duke is rolling at 11-0, the most wins in college basketball, and they are the unanimous pick for number one. The Blue Devils hit the road for ACC play for the first time, like when they take on Boston College on Saturday. For much of the freshman-laden team, it's their first taste of league play, and the players are more than ready. Um, upbeat, you know, especially on the road, it's going to be a lot of fans. Um, just got to go in and stay together. That's all I've been hearing from most of my coaching staff and, uh, you know, people like Grayson and Marquis, the people who've played in it already. It's going to get tougher. Um, but I think we're ready, man. We work so hard. We, we're battle tested, and I think that we'll be ready for this, for this conference play. Well, Wake Forest battles Army on the court. That's ahead for you at 11 o'clock. Until then, enjoy the rest of your Friday. Several wildfires in Southern California continue to pose a major threat to residents in the region as firefighters work around the clock to put them out. Omar Jimenez is in Southern California with the latest developments. 
The sheer size of the California wildfires paired with unfavorable conditions is creating a tough environment for officials on the ground. The Thomas fire alone, the biggest of the six blazes raging in Southern California, is more than twice the size of Washington, D.C., and is the biggest fire Los Angeles has battled since 1961. At least 190,000 people have been evacuated from their homes. We're with you all the way. It's a long process to recovery. It's very painful. It's very emotional to be losing your home. 5,700 firefighters are working to contain these blazes. On Friday, President Donald Trump approved an emergency declaration, freeing up federal funds. 1,300 California National Guardsmen have been activated, and officials warn even when the fire is out, the danger is still there. All these burning stumps and logs, you get any kind of wind on those, and all it takes is one ember to jump that, that road, and we're off and running again. It doesn't get any easier from here, with wind gusts in the region up to 60 miles per hour and dry conditions continuing throughout the weekend. The potential for the fires to get worse before they get better is very real. In Southern California, I'm Omar Jimenez. Email given to congressional investigators show members of the Trump campaign were offered access to hacked WikiLeaks documents. Donald Trump Jr. and other members of the Trump organization received the email. It's not clear whether the email was a real effort to give the hacked documents to the campaign, and investigators aren't sure who sent the September email. Donald Trump Jr. told investigators that he had no recollection of the email, but its existence was verified by his attorney. Now, congressional investigators are trying to determine whether the individual who sent it is legitimate and if it shows that there were additional efforts by WikiLeaks to connect with President Trump's son and with others associated with the campaign. Well, cheap Delta flights to Europe will be anything but in coming weeks. Coming up, here why, plus the latest on the economy in today's market report. Winter storm warning continues for the triad area into Saturday. We're going to talk about how much more snow we'll be getting coming up after the break. Did you put up flyers? Excuse me, how much for this, um... Death ray. It's billion dollars. What? <sighs> I'm never going to make enough to cover these early termination fees for satellite. They make you sign a contract, so you got to pay hundreds of dollars to, just to get out of it. They don't even remove the dish. Ridiculous. I'll give you four bucks. Put it in the jar. I would pay twice as much for that. That was me trying to get her into a bidding war. Uh -huh. Termination fees are evil. Yeah, I can use that. Spectrum doesn't have them. Satellite TV, bad. Spectrum, good. Five minutes a night just doesn't cut it. That's why Chevrolet Sports Night is on for a full half hour every night on Spectrum News. Get intense with Get it. Get more scores, more highlights, more interviews. It's just a matter of time. More coverage of your favorite high school, college, and professional teams. And more time to focus on your local teams. Watch Chevrolet Sports Night, nightly at 10 on Spectrum News, exclusively on Spectrum. You're watching Spectrum News on ABC 45. Get your Spectrum News anytime. Call today. Meteorologist Terry Bennett is now with us with our latest forecast. And Terry, wow, we have a lot of snow out there, more than we anticipated, it seems. Well, it's that real heavy, wet variety, and it's just not letting up. And it doesn't look like it will until we get into Saturday. So, yeah, that's creating a pretty messy evening commute. This is I-40 at Sandy Ridge, and things are moving along pretty slowly, in part due to the Friday evening commute. But factor in those wet roads, reduced visibility, and, yeah, it's slow going outside on a number of roadways across the region and the snow showing no signs of letting up anytime soon. It is going to continue as we move through the overnight and into Saturday and at times I think we'll see burst of heavier snows. Now the saving grace as we've been talking about since the beginning was that the ground and the surface temperatures are still well above freezing. So the roads that are touching the ground or on the surface are primarily just wet, a little bit slushy, but it's those elevated road surfaces like bridges and overpasses that you may encounter some patchy ice, especially as we move through the overnight hours and the amount of travel on those bridges and overpasses begins to wane. The snow extending all the way back down to New Orleans tonight. In fact, parts of South Texas had snow. My sister in San Antonio called and she's sending me pictures of snow. That's pretty rare and we're enjoying a pretty rare snowfall as 
well, but boy, it just doesn't want to seem to let up. Winter storm warning will continue until 4 p.m. on Saturday. It looks like the snow will begin to taper off as we move through the midday hours. We've already had half of an inch of liquid and 1.6 inches of snow. That's a new record for the day. The old record set back in 1976 when we had 1.2 inches of snow. High temperature today, that was 42 degrees, but that was just past midnight. Much of the day we've been in the 30s, in fact, hovering right about 32 degrees, and that's where we're going to stay. The heavy wet snow will continue through midday on Saturday. Two to four inches of accumulation on primarily grassy surfaces, elevated road surfaces like overpasses, cars, rooftops, and then some patchy ice is possible early Saturday, but I think the bigger concern will be Sunday morning. Here's a look at some of the snow potential we're looking at. Several more inches to go yet, and it's that real heavy, wet variety of snow, so it's going to compact as it continues to pile up. It'll be hard to get a real official measurement out of it, but again, with it continuing through midday on Saturday, we're going to see several inches of the white stuff around here. Nice day on Saturday. It'll be a pretty snow and should finally begin to taper off as we move through the day on Saturday. Now temperature Saturday not getting out of the 30s again, so very little melting will take place, although some will, and then we'll have all this moisture around and temperature Saturday night into Sunday morning plunging into the 20s. This is when we're likely to see that black ice scenario setting up on area roadways across the region, so keep that in mind for the weekend. 31 tonight as we continue through the overnight with the snow continuing, it begins to taper off tomorrow, about 36 for a high, but it's Sunday morning temperatures deep in the 20s, which will likely lead to the worst of it for us. It may see some ice still lingering Monday morning with, again, temperatures dropping into the 20s. Kristen, it's going to stay cold through Friday. All right. Well, let's get the latest on the economy in today's market report. A strong November jobs report sent stocks higher in the Friday session. I'm Matt McClure with the market wrap up. The Dow at S&P closed at fresh record highs. At the closing bell, the Dow was up 117 to end at 24,329. The Nasdaq jumped 27, the S&P 500 up 14. Well, another strong month for the labor market. Employers across the country added 228,000 jobs last month, according to the Labor Department. The unemployment rate meantime remained at a 17 year low of 4.1%, the same as the month before. Analysts say the numbers are a sign that the economy is expanding at a healthy pace, and many employers are struggling to hire enough qualified workers to fill job openings. Discount store chain Dollar General is bucking the retail trend. It's announced it plans to open 900 new stores next year, and that'll be the second year in a row that the chain has expanded. Dollar stores now are one of the few retail groups that are thriving, while many traditional brick-and-mortar retailers have struggled to keep up with online shopping sites like Amazon. According to the company, by the end of the year, more than three in four Americans will live within five miles of Dollar General. The company did not say how many new job openings the openings would create. Well, cheap Delta flights to Europe and North Africa are about to get more expensive thanks to new baggage fees. The airline says it will charge basic economy passengers on those routes $60 for the first check bag, $100 for the second. Currently, basic economy passengers get one free checked bag. Delta says there are no changes to domestic baggage fees, though, or any fees on more expensive overseas flights or flights to other regions. That's the market wrap up. I'm Matt McClure. Tonight on Spectrum News on ABC 45, we'll have the latest on road conditions and the updated weather forecast for tonight and through the weekend. That's it for now. ABC World News Tonight with David Muir is next. We'll be back here at 11 on ABC 45. Have a wonderful evening.